Howdy, beautiful little bard here, and welcome back. And this is going to be next video in the Paragon project, or Project Paragon, whichever you want to look at it as. And quick recount of what we're doing here is now I've made one change, and I'll show you what I've done here. Is we've gone from we'll just use the player base here. I always use a player base as my default player character and what we want to do was we want to add in the Shinbi character as opposed to uh, and let's actually find where she are so what we were having a problem with was when we first started off we would get a mouse cursor that you'd have to left click first to be able to get rid of the mouse cursor. Alright, so the reason why I didn't like that is, well, just pointless, but the way that I fixed it was I went to the Blueprints folder, open Level Blueprints, and under Event Begin Play, you set your input mode to Game Only, and you show your mouse cursor is Don't Show It, and it's hooked up through the Player Controller. And by doing that, it allowed it to force to make sure that there is no mouse cursor when you first start into the, uh, the level. So, all right, so her jump was another thing that was really bugging the crap out of me. And if you look in the Paragon Shinbi folder, characters, heroes, Shinbi, go into your player character and your character movement the original was set to 300 and I'll show what that was like here so when you went into the, the level she does her little thing and you go in there and this was the jump and this is well kind of junk so what I did was I went into the character movement of her player character and I changed it to 500 on the jump Z velocity Hit compile and save. Now when you hit play, load in, she does her pretty little thing, you come over here and you actually have a little bit better jump. To me I think that works pretty good. You can adjust that value to wherever you want. Um, you can adjust it to a thousand and if you look at the scale here, she jumps to about where that first line is. A thousand, she'll jump almost to the, the middle level right there. So, what else can we do? Well, again, the game looks kind of plain here. Don't have anything, so let's go ahead and add in a simple player HUD. But the first thing we want to do is let's go into one option here, and this is going to break things a little and I'm going to fix part of it. If you look at our character, player, blueprints, this is where I've moved and renamed my third person character to player underscore base. So if you notice that, um, I'm going to go ahead and delete this so I can get back to where I was before. Sorry, I made another version of this video and it uh, was not working for me. So if we look at Shinbi, and her player character you've got this extra parameters down here that are for that these are going to be different so one thing we can do here is I'm actually going to take and rename player base to old underscore player base we're going to grab the Shinbi player character and I'm going to left click and drag this over to the player blueprints and I'm going to copy it here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit F2 and I'm going to rename this to player underscore base so this is going to be our new player character we're going to work with and I'm going to go back into my game mode and I'm going to change the default pawn class to player underscore base I'm going to hit save all we're going to go back into the game again 
and we see that there she is running around the jump is like we planned it we have the attack but it's weird is whenever you change the name of it then she loses her ability to do the extra attack and I'm going to assume that that is part of the animation blueprint so looking at the animation blueprint yep cast to shimmy player character so what we're gonna have to do here is cast to shimmy player character we need to find all the references that are pointing to shimmy player character which I see one here one here and is there any more cast to character no, nope, looks like it's just two. So, before I edit this one, I'm going to close it down. And I love how it tells me that I need to save something. And I didn't make any changes just in. So, I'm going to go ahead to copy this over to here. And I'm not going to edit the original one. So, I'm going to go ahead and hit save all because it's going to know the crap out of me. And we're going to rename this to Paragon NMBP. This is going to change, and this is not going to be a primary use thing. So let's go into this one. And we want to replace Cast to Shimmy Player Character in both of these two locations. It's interesting how that has no yeah okay cast to player underscore base and I'm gonna control C and control V so I have two of them to work with and I am going to redirect these nodes and I'm going to break that link. So now we can get rid of that one and here we are. And same thing for here. We want to come from here to here and here to here. Try to get pawn owner. We're going to run that to the object and from as player base we go directly to the target here and then we can delete that and move this back down so in theory that should work bind event to attacking okay so why would that be a problem as player base thought we had that hooked up there Alright, so we're going to have to redo this one here, and we'll try bind event to Alright, so we need to bind the event but what was that event? attacking event zero bind event to attacking and we need to link from player base to there and we're going to need to redirect here to here delete that and let's see if that fixes it apparently looks okay and we'll hit save and now we want to come into our player base and under our mesh let's change our animation class to 
Paragon animation. Okay, she's doing her idle. Let's hit compile and save. What about now? Do you work? We can walk, we can jump, we can do the attack, but we can't do the attack again. So, it's one of those things where when you start changing files around, it's going to be a pain in the butt. Because you don't know what's going to work, what's not going to work. So apparently something is still not working correctly, and it's because we missed two right here. Cast to Shinbi player character. So we want to go ahead and grab two more of our cast to player base. And let's try moving that to here. Try to get pawn owner. We'll bring the target down. Okay, so it's not wanting me to go into attack combo save because it is not the Shibby player character. So let's look for. I love whatever it's, it's blocking what I'm trying to find here. And we'll look for a combo attack save. And now we can get rid of those two. And we'll just move that down so we clean it up a little bit. And same thing here. We want to go ahead and look for reset combo. And we'll hook up this to try get pawn owner and to here. And we'll get rid of those two. And we'll go ahead and move this up. And this should resolve our issue, hopefully. Hit compile, hit save, and let's try one more again. Now, what this is going to do is, hey, how about that? And there's our combo attack. So, what this is going to allow us to do is, we can run off of that, and if I'm not mistaken, and we're just going to experiment with one thing and then we'll move on, is with the old player base, we're using the um, UE4 mannequin. For the giggles of it, let's actually create a child blueprint class. We'll call this Manny underscore P. We'll go in here, select the mesh. And we're going to change it to the SK Mannequin. And I'm pretty sure that this is not going to work. And it's not. But you can actually put this back to the third person animation blueprint. And the reason why it didn't work with the. They're not sharing the same skeleton. So. Why is it showing two of them in there? Yeah, 4.19 has been acting absolutely stupid to me. But what will happen if we now go into our Manny P? We still have a regular working UE4 mannequin. So, but we don't want to do that. We don't like him. He sucks. Force delete. The default pawn class is player base. We're going to save all, save selected, hit play, and there we go. We're back to her. So we want to go ahead and, and just quickly add in a player HUD. So if we look into our UMG folder, widgets folder, let's go ahead and create a user interface widget blueprint, and we're going to call that player HUD. We're going to open it up and we're going to also go back into here, go into our player base, and we need to create a new variable and we're going to call that health. 
and I'm going to go ahead and set that as a float instance editable expose on spawn and let's go ahead and replicate it too so compile save health let's set to one and yes you have to compile and save to be able to change the default value then I'm going to compile and save one more time and then here's what we want to do is we want to grab a progress bar and we're not going to make this extravagant for right now we want some functionality so we can see a visible health bar let's change the default color to red and let's go ahead and set our anchor to the bottom right hand corner and let's create a binding for the health this is really really simple um, we're gonna rename this to get health and what we want to do is which we already had a cast a player base grab that and we'll get an object reference to player character set that there we want to get our health and we want to do float actually I want to change one parameter on here in our player underscore base I'm going to change the health to 100 so now we do our we get our health and we're going to divide it by 100 and then link that to the return value to the return node and what that's going to do is it will give us a sliding scale or a scale of from 0 to 100 percent and that's just the way I prefer to do things hit compile and save and then in our player base we're going to need to come over to right here and let's go ahead and do event begin play and from our event begin play we want to create a widget the widget that we want to create is our player HUD and we're gonna need our player controller and then we want to add it to the viewport. That's all we really need to do for getting this functional. And let's do compile and save. So now when we hit play, we have a little health bar down here in the bottom. So how do we know that it actually works? Well, to make that quick, it is such a simple thing to do. And let's go ahead and create a new folder called assets inside here I'm going to create a new folder called triggers and I'm going to create a blueprint actor and pain trigger we'll go into that we're going to add a component we're going to add a cube we're going to add a component a box collision we're going to take that cube and we're going to make it 0.2 in height but we're also going to make it 2x2 two two, so we'll make it a little bit bigger doesn't matter what the color looks like and all that jazz we're going to grab the box collision we're going to make it a little bit bigger and there we go so we wanted about the same size as the uh, the box itself and inside this box we can go ahead and scroll down and on component begin overlap oh I love Unreal Engine 4 isn't that awesome alright so with our on component begin overlap we're going to cast to our player base connect other actor up to here again this is liable to change later on as well 
and we want to get health we want to set health so what we're gonna do when we walk over this is we're going to get our health we are going to subtract 10 from our health connect that and connect that so when we walk over this this pad it's going to automatically reduce our health by 10 so let's go ahead and anchor that back over here and let's go ahead and we start right there so I'm gonna grab our pain trigger and I'm gonna throw it into the map right there so we come into the map we start she does her little dance you walk over it and we just lost 10 health and there's 10 more and 10 more so this is gonna give us a simple health display so we know exactly how much health we have left and it's gonna reduce by 10 every time we walk over it and now we have a zero alright so one more thing I want to do really quickly is we look at our player base we have our begin play and our health is going to be set to 100 in fact we'll save this for another video what I'll do is I'll set our minimum and maximum and and our our healing we'll do a health regeneration so let's go ahead and end the video here and I'll pick it up in the next video and we'll do a health regen alright thanks for watching and we'll see you soon